Hey everyone, Nick here and welcome back to GamerTube, and welcome back to our Five Nights at Freddy's character concept series. So in today's video, we'll be recapping all the events from the Jolly Jurassic Pizzeria. We'll be looking at all the characters, their backstory, gameplay mechanics, and all that good stuff as well. As always, everything I say in these videos isn't necessarily linked to the overall lore and universe of FNAF. This is just a fun, creepy story that you get to tell, and we hope you enjoy it. As always, do be sure to subscribe to GamerTube as it helps out a lot and it's greatly appreciated. It also keeps you up to date with the videos that we post. Alrighty, well let's get into the recap of the Jolly Jurassic Pizzeria. So in our previous videos we explored the jungle themed Freddy's Pizzeria, the Funtime Farm Pizzeria, the Water Wonderland Pizzeria, and the Insect Kingdom Pizzeria. But now across the country in a new state stood another branch in the Freddy Fazbear Pizzeria family. This was of course the Jolly Jurassic Pizzeria. This was a prehistoric dinosaur themed children's entertainment restaurant. Like most Freddy Fazbear establishments, they had a number of fun attractions and areas that would fit their theme. But apart from the party area, the seating and dining area, there was the main stage. This is where the animatronics would perform all their Jolly Birthday songs for all the guests in the Jurassic Jam Band. Speaking of animatronics, let's meet our first dino character. So the first character we're introducing is Roger Rex. Roger Rex was of course modelled after the king of the dinosaurs, the mighty Tyrannosaurus Rex. The engineers opted for a bright red colour scheme with shiny metallic claws and teeth. Of course, like most animatronics at Freddy Fazbear's, they weren't kept their cleanest. Roger's body was covered in multiple stains and marks. Due to their delicate hardware, they couldn't really be cleaned. All the staff could do was pretty much spray them here and there to prevent any nasty odours. One key feature of all the animatronics at the Jolly Jurassic Pizzeria was their facial recognition software. So all the characters had the ability to scan each and every guest. This would help them determine who they were talking to whether it was a child, adult, staff member, or security personnel. So all in all, this facial recognition software proved to be quite successful. But every new and innovative software has its fair share of hiccups here and there. So Roger's role up on stage was that of the main singer. They would be up on stage singing all their birthday tunes with all the other members of the band. So overall, Roger was considered to be quite the successful animatronic. Their facial recognition software worked quite well and was fairly effective. That was until the restaurant was closed and the hiccups happened after hours. From time to time, Roger would get a little confused with identifying the night guard. Sometimes they would register as the night guard, but other times they would be identified as an endoskeleton without its costume. Seeing that this is strictly not allowed at any Freddy Fazbear establishment, Roger would have no choice but to take the Defiant Endo to the repair room and stuff them inside an empty costume. But seeing that all the outer skins at the Jolly Jurassic Pizzeria were made of a dense hard plastic and sharp metal inner workings, being crammed into one of these costumes would be certain death. So when the player checks the security cameras, Roger would always be up on stage. The player would be safe until the lights turn off in the stage area. Once the lights were off, this would mean the pretend show was over and Roger would be on the move. Roger would only approach from the right hand side door. As soon as they approached the door, the player would need to shut it immediately. Unfortunately for the player, Roger was one of the only animatronics that would stay at the door the longest. This wouldn't work well for the player's power consumption. But fortunately for them, the player could control the stage lights. Roger would head over towards the stage and investigate. The player would now know where Roger was by seeing them appear back on the stage on the cameras. Roger would also be able to mess around with the cameras. He would have the ability to freeze frame one of the cameras. So whilst looking at the monitors, there would be two different Rogers in two different areas. The player would have to determine which one was the real Roger and act accordingly. This could definitely confuse the player and keep them occupied whilst Roger made their way towards the office. So with all these different abilities thrown at the player, this would surely keep them on their toes. 
The player is bound to slip up sometime, and when they do, they will be greeted with a classic FNAF jump scare. So for the next character at the Jolly Jurassic Pizzeria, we have Ruby Raptor. Ruby was modelled after the famous Velociraptor. The engineers went with a fun bright pink colour scheme to make her look much more friendly. So one would notice that Ruby is sporting the traditional feathers that raptors were thought to have at the time. So Ruby's role up on stage was that of the tambourine player. She would be playing up on stage whilst Roger sang main vocals. So all in all, Ruby was considered to be the Jolly Jurassic Pizzeria's most successful animatronic. She was definitely the most popular and the crowd favourite. So alongside Ruby's sophisticated facial recognition software, she also had something else that made her quite unique. This was Ruby's copycat ability. So whilst amongst all the guests, Ruby would have the neat party trick of copying a selected person's movements. So she would scan the person and copy their movements whilst in a sort of recording stage. So if the guests would raise their arms, blink, shake their head, or open and close their mouth, Ruby would copy and do the exact same thing. So like most of the characters at any Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria, they eventually got dirty and stained and withered. It isn't really something that can be helped. This started to make Ruby a little more strange looking and a tad bit more disturbing. The other employees and the guests didn't seem to mind. But Ruby always creeped out the night guard. Ruby would always be staring at them. Little did the night guard know, Ruby was staring at them for a sinister reason. So all the employees at the Jolly Jurassic Pizzeria had a fun little tradition that they would do once a year. So one night out of the year, all the employees would get together and watch their favourite dinosaur movie of all time. You know, the one about the park. So whilst the employees were watching their movie, unknown to them, Ruby was in the background watching right behind them. They'd never seen anything like this before. What were these terrifying looking creatures on screen? They looked exactly like her. Ruby was fascinated with these frightening creatures. Whilst watching the movie, Ruby got so engaged that she accidentally activated her copycat ability. She scanned the ferocious movie monsters and copied their every move. Ruby suddenly had the urge to attack. She had the urge to hunt. Thankfully, the staff members were locked away safely behind the door and the toughened glass. But there was someone who wasn't so well protected. That was, of course, the Night Guard. Ruby had an insatiable instinct to hunt down the Night Guard and tear them to shreds. So whilst in this frenzied state, Ruby would make her way towards the office. And inside the office would be the poor unsuspecting Night Guard. So whilst looking at the security cameras, the player would be able to see Ruby making their way to the office. Most times she'll be hiding and avoiding the cameras. So the player needs to look extra careful in order to spot her. Ruby would try to enter the security office no matter what. She would be able to appear at both doors and also through the vents. As soon as the player sees Ruby at the doors, they would need to shut them immediately. But when it comes to the vents, it would be a different story. So whenever the player sees Ruby in the vents, they would need to quickly shine their flashlight in her eyes. The sudden flash of light would quickly override her copycat phase and bring her back to normal. Unfortunately, this wouldn't last long. So with Ruby attempting to enter through the doors and vents, this would definitely put the pressure on the player. Ruby would definitely be patient and pick the right moment to attack. The player would need to focus and always keep an eye out for this sneaky pink raptor. If they fail to do so, then they'll be greeted with a classic FNAF jump scare. So for our next character, we have Spike the Spinosaurus. Spike was of course modelled after the famous dinosaur, the Spinosaurus. These creatures were well known for their long snouts, and of course, their famous large sail on their back. The engineers decided to go with a purple and red colour scheme. Their body shape was much larger than the other characters at the pizzeria. 
Their head and neck shape was quite different as well. Because of their long jaws being quite heavy, they needed an extra hydraulic support strut. This would ensure that Spike's mouth would open and close without collapsing under its own weight. So Spike's role up on stage was that of the keyboard player. They'd be playing all their jolly birthday songs right next to Roger and Ruby. Spike was considered to be a successful animatronic. They were quite popular amongst the guests and had their own dedicated fan base. But like all animatronics at the Jolly Jurassic Pizzeria, their problems were only present at night. So the problem the pizzeria faced with Spike was his obsession with biting. Spike of course would never bite any of the guests or workers. They were more interested in biting down on all the furniture and props. Multiple times a night, the guard would catch Spike chewing on various objects, whether it be tables, chairs, or even the prop dinosaur skeletons on display. Since Spike had a powerful bite strength thanks to his hydraulic jaws, not many objects would stand a chance. So a couple of broken chairs and props here and there wasn't too much of an issue. The only issue was when Spike bit something they really shouldn't have. So on that unfortunate night, all the characters were roaming around the pizzeria just as normal. It turns out the repair worker forgot to lock the door to the repair room. With this room being unlocked, Spike was free to enter as they pleased. Spike has never been in here before. They were amazed at all the new and exciting things that they could bite and chew on. One thing in particular that caught their eye was the metal endoskeletons. So Spike wasted no time locking their jaws around the endo's metal skeleton. As they chewed them in their mouth, they accidentally triggered the endo's reserve power. Its eyes come to life as it wakes up inside of Spike's mouth. The endoskeleton quickly senses it's in danger and attempts to defend itself. The endo tries to claw and strike its way out of Spike's jaws. But there was no way that Spike was letting go. The twisted metal skeleton ripped and tore away the plastic shell from Spike's jaw and arms. After an hour of trying to break free, in the end Spike was victorious. When the workers found the state that Spike was in, they didn't know what to do. Especially since they had a special event happening at the pizzeria very soon. The local museum had agreed to display one of their newest fossils at the pizzeria for a limited time. The pizzeria couldn't have Spike looking like this when the exhibition was on. So they decided to place him in out of order until they can get him repaired. So the day finally came when the museum would display the new and rare fossil. It was displayed behind a glass cabinet to ensure no one would touch it. So it was the guard's duty to keep an eye on the rare and precious fossil. So whilst wandering around, Spike couldn't help but notice the new attraction. Spike needed to chew this fossil, more than anything they've ever chewed at the pizzeria to date. So they approached the glass case and drove their mechanical endoskeleton arms straight through the glass. Just as Spike was about to chomp down on the extremely rare and expensive fossil, the night guard dove in and swiped it from them. The night guard hurried back towards the office with the fossil. They had to keep it safe in the security office. So knowing that the fossil was with the night guard, Spike would do anything to get their hands on it. The player will need to keep an eye on the security cameras to locate Spike's position. Spike's starting position would always start in the repair room. So Spike was way too large to fit into the air vents. So at least this was one less way they could enter the security office. So the way they would enter would be through the left hand door. Once they appear, the player would need to shut the door immediately. As it gets later in the night, Spike would become more and more aggressive. Their movement would become faster as they rush towards the door. In some instances, Spike can even chomp down on the door as it comes down. The player would have to repeatedly tap the button in order to force it shut and slam it out of their jaws. But if the player can't keep up with Spike and lets him in, they'd be greeted with a classic FNAF jump scare. And the new character we're introducing is Murphy the Mosasaurus. Murphy was of course modelled after the great aquatic dinosaur the Mosasaurus. 
He was given a bright blue colour scheme with a cream coloured underbelly and bottom jaw. They were given spiked ridges all up and down their body. For their limbs they have four large flippers. So Murphy's role up on stage was that of the drum player. They would stand behind a large drum set and play along with the rest of the band. So as far as the pizzeria was concerned, Murphy was a successful and trouble free animatronic. As always, looks can be quite deceiving. So as we all know over night time, all the animatronics get placed in their free roam setting. They're free to roam around the pizzeria as they please. But amongst all the other animatronics, Murphy was the only one who hardly moved at all. They just stood in one position for most of the night. The night guard always kept an eye on Murphy through the security cameras. They couldn't really put their finger on it, but something always seemed off about Murphy. They didn't know what it was. As time went on, Murphy's body seemed to get worse and worse. As each week went by, something new was wrong with them. All this happened around the time that the night guard got suspicious of them. It seemed that the more they investigated them, the angrier and more damaged they became. So in the next few days, the repair worker arrived at the pizzeria and got ready to do some service work on Murphy. So first off, they would disengage Murphy's ability to open and close their jaw. So in order to do this, the player would need some help from their trusty helpy Matic. This was a handheld computer system that was used to work on the animatronics. They plugged in the helpy Matic into Murphy's bottom jaw and started to override their system. Now before they open Murphy up, the player now has the ability to x-ray his body with the helpy Matic. The repair worker holds up the device and sets it to x-ray mode. The device flickers to life as it scans through Murphy's outer layer. And what they see is very strange to say the least. Then all of a sudden, Murphy's jaw opens up as wide as it can. Their eyes roll back into their head as something slowly exits their mouth. Hanging out of Murphy's mouth was a miniature endoskeleton. Its eyes started to glow red as the screen fades to black. By the morning, the repair worker was nowhere to be seen. The employees thought that he must have left late last night. But the night guard knew that that couldn't be possible. There was no footage of them ever leaving the building. It was clear that something must have happened to them, and it involved Murphy. So that night, the guard attempted to sneak up on Murphy and catch them doing anything suspicious. As they waited and watched, Murphy's mouth began to open. Then all of a sudden before their eyes creeped out what looked to be a miniature endoskeleton. Before the guard knew it, Murphy turned around, allowing the endo to look straight at them. Their eyes glowed red as the night guard quickly got out of there as fast as they could. That thing has seen their face. It wouldn't be long before it goes after them just like it did the repair worker. So throughout the night, they would need to keep an eye out for Murphy. As soon as they see them approach from the right hand door, they would need to close it immediately. Sometimes they would see Murphy, and the other times they would see the endoskeleton. If Murphy's mouth was open but there was no endo, this would mean that they would need to immediately check both the air vents. In this instance, the endo would be able to detach from Murphy's body and crawl through the vents. When the player sees the endoskeleton, they would need to use the helpy Matic and x-ray scan them. The sudden x-ray beam would stun them and cause them to retreat. So now that Murphy had the ability to separate and become two entities, the player was really dealing with five characters rather than four. The player needs to keep on high alert and look out for both these disturbing characters. If they lost sight of them or got overwhelmed, they'd be greeted with a classic FNAF jump scare. And the character we're introducing is Timmy the Pterodactyl. So, Timmy was modelled after the winged dinosaur, the pterodactyl. They were given a bright green colour scheme with purple coloured eyes. Their arms were quite different to most of the other animatronics. Instead of arms and hands, Timmy was given wings. These wings weren't built to fly. They were purely designed for aesthetics. But this didn't mean that Timmy didn't fly in a sense. So unlike his other robotic buddies, Timmy didn't perform up on stage. They instead had their own sectioned off area at the pizzeria, and this area was the prehistoric puppet theatre. This was a miniature theatre that put on multiple puppet shows throughout the day. The main character of the show was of course, Timmy. 
They were also accompanied up on stage by a number of smaller dinosaur puppets. The majority of these characters were controlled by the other staff members. Apart from the puppet characters being hooked up to strings, Timmy was also connected to wires that would hoist him up in mid-air to simulate him flying. The prehistoric puppet theatre proved to be a success amongst all the guests. With daily shows playing and plenty of smiling guests, the managers seemed quite happy with the turnout of this separate miniature theatre room. But little did they know the kind of trouble this theatre would cause. So when it came for Timmy's time to shine on the puppet stage, they would be hoisted up by a number of cables and pulleys. Those cables and pulleys were under a lot of stress when they lifted up his heavy body. But on one unfortunate day, things didn't exactly go to plan. So after multiple shows, those cables lifting Timmy again and again started to get weaker and worn out. Timmy was hovering up on the cables as the jolly music played. Then all of a sudden, one of the cables snapped. The counterweight came crashing down, sending Timmy right into the lighting and electricals. Timmy crashed into the stage light and received a massive shock. The jolt of electricity set fire to Timmy's thin plastic wings. The high voltage scrambled all of their internal workings and electronics. After a short while, the workers cut the power and figured out how to get Timmy down. This unfortunate incident has caused the pizzeria to temporarily shut down the prehistoric puppet theatre. But Timmy didn't know what they were going to do without performing any shows. That's all they've done for as long as they can remember. Timmy wouldn't know what to do with themselves if they couldn't put on any puppet shows. So they decided to continue the show for themselves. But when it came to the big finale, they were in no shape to hang off the wire pulley. So they needed to find someone who could take their place. Then suddenly they had a not so bright idea. The only person at this time of night was the night guard. They'd be perfect to suspend from the wires. They were the right weight and body shape. Of course, tying them to the wires and suspending them in mid-air wouldn't be the easiest task. They would have to tie the wires around their wrists, ankles, and even hook the sharp metal cables into their body. It would be extremely painful for the night guard, but at least the show would go on. The night guard would need to keep an eye out for Timmy and all the other characters. Timmy would always appear from the left-hand side door. When the player sees them, they would need to close the door immediately. When watching the security cameras, Timmy would always start off at the puppet theatre. As soon as they approach the office, the player has to move quickly and shut the door. On some occasions, Timmy could still be there. They'd be hanging from the door frame, staring at the player. Another move that Timmy will do is try to hook the player with the cables as they fish them through the air vents. In this instance, the player would have to throw their soda cup at the cable, making Timmy think that they've hooked onto something and pulling it back through. If the player messes up and gets overwhelmed, they'd be greeted with a classic FNAF jump scare. With another night shift comes another character. Or should I say three characters? And these characters are the Compi Crew. The Compi Crew was comprised of three miniature characters. These characters were simply named Greeny, Goldie, and Red. The Compi Crew were by far the smallest characters at the Jolly Jurassic Pizzeria. So these three pint sized characters were modelled after the miniature dinosaur Compsognathus. 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 Each of these little characters had a snout with rows of pointy teeth, and due to their small stature, they had different joints and mechanics to the other larger characters. So their role at the pizzeria was cleaning and clearing all the tables. After the guests had finished eating their meals, the compu crew would collect all the dirty plates and cups and return them back to the kitchen. All the dirty dishes would go in the dishwasher, and the trash would go in the large trash compactor. Once they were done for the night, they would return back to their charging bays. This is where they would rest until the next shift would start again. So overall, the combis were a great addition to the Jolly Jurassic team. Not only did the children like these funny little characters, but they proved to be very helpful to all the employees and the business. But one unfortunate accident would change all of this. So the day was going fine until one of the guests started crying. 
Apparently they left their dental retainer on one of the tables and it must have got collected up by the compies. If it was collected by Greeny, then it surely would have been thrown in the trash compactor. The workers spent hours searching through the compactor but couldn't find it anywhere. Eventually the restaurant had to close. The compies felt awful about this. Greeny didn't mean to add it to the garbage. When the doors were shut and the employees left for the day, all the compies returned to their charging bays. Just as Red was about to turn in for the night and charge up, they saw something. There it was, the retainer. It was just laying in the garbage inside the compactor. Red decided to climb into the compactor and fish it out for themselves. Just as they did, the night guard wandered into the kitchen. They were finishing a can of soda just before starting their night shift. They tossed in the empty can in the compactor and pressed the crush button. The machine sprang to life as the large metal compactor drove down and crushed all the garbage. The loud metal sound wakes up Greeny and Goldie. They turn their heads and see the guard wandering out of the kitchen. They then turn their heads back and look at the compactor. Sticking out of the top of the trash pile was a severely damaged red. Goldie and Greeny rushed over and dove inside the trash compactor. The sharp metal cans and crushed garbage tore away their outer skins as they retrieved the damaged body of Red. As soon as they pulled out their withered crushed body from the compactor, all they could do was mourn their lost friend. Filled with rage, all they could think about was making the damn night guard pay for what they have done. Greeny and Goldie swear they will return the favour and crush the night guard just as they did their poor little Red. So whilst keeping an eye out for the other characters, they also need to keep an eye out for Greeny and Goldie. Their starting position was always in the kitchen. In classic FNAF fashion, the kitchen camera would be disabled. Although there was no visual, there was still audio. Whenever the player hears the sound of little feet scurrying along the tiled floor, that's when they knew they were both on the move. Due to their small size, both Greeny and Goldie would make their way through the vents and try to attack the player. Greeny would appear from the left vent and Goldie would appear from the right. Whenever the player sees either of them, they would need to use the helper matic and X-ray scan them to stun them. This worked on the small endoskeleton living inside of Murphy, so it was bound to work on the compies. On some rare occasions if the player ever hears the sound of sparks, they would need to act immediately. This would mean that the disfigured body of Red would be making their way through the vents. Whenever the player sees Red, they would have to act differently. Instead of scanning them, they would need to stay perfectly still. Considering they had no eyes, they couldn't be stunned with the helpy matic. The player just needs to stay still in order to not make any sounds. Soon, Red will think that no one is there and eventually leave. But this could cause trouble if any characters were at the door. If you can't move and close the doors, then they'll jump scare you instead. But if the player can't keep up with the compies in their attempts to enter the office, then they too will greet the player with a classic FNAF jump scare. As the night guard faces a new shift, that means a new character will be revealed. And this character is Tracy Triceratops. Tracy was of course modelled after the humble three-horned dinosaur, the Triceratops. They were given a bright orange colour scheme and three large horns protruding out of their head. Tracy's specific build was quite similar to the other animatronics. But when it came to Tracy's design, there was one key difference. Tracy's body also doubled up as a miniature pizza oven. This meant that the workers could load a pizza into Tracy's body and she could cook it for the guests. So when it came to Tracy's role at the Jolly Jurassic Pizzeria, she didn't perform up on stage. She was instead stationed at the pizza bar. Her specific section was called Tracy's Triceratoppings. This is where the guests would specifically choose what they wanted on their pizza. So the way in which Tracy's body cooked the pizzas was with her electric heating elements. She had one below and one on top of her cooking compartment. This miniature oven inside of her chest would be securely closed off and locked with the two sturdy doors on Tracy's torso. These doors were made from a special heat absorbing material. This would ensure Tracy was never hot to the touch on the outside when cooking pizzas. All in all, Tracy was considered to be quite the successful character. 
but the Jolly Jurassic Pizzeria would soon realise just what could go wrong with putting a working oven inside a children's entertainment animatronic. So as time went by, Tracy cooked her fair share of pizzas. Day by day, she would cook the same old boring thing again and again. Eventually, Tracy longed to cook things that were much more interesting. So whilst Tracy was out amongst all the guests, little did she know one of them would place an object inside her torso. So from time to time, the hinges on her oven door would spring open. So whenever they would open up, Tracy would have to quickly shut them back again. But this time she wasn't quick enough. Just before she could close the door, a small child snuck a stuffed toy inside of Tracy's oven torso. The stuffed Freddy Fazbear toy rested inside Tracy for the time being. After a little while, the soft flammable toy caught a light. A thick bellow of smoke started rising out of Tracy's chest. And before she knew it, her whole lower body was engulfed in flame. The flames grew quickly as Tracy's body burned up. Fortunately for her, all the fire and smoke triggered the emergency sprinklers. But although the sprinklers put out the fire, the damage was already done. Tracy's bottom half was completely burnt away. All that was left was charred wires and metal. Apart from all the burning and damage, Tracy also remembers feeling alive. She had never cooked something like that before. The fact that it was so dangerous gave Tracy a rush she had never felt before. So much in fact that she wanted to do it all again. But this time she wanted to cook something far more interesting. That was until the night guard caught her eye. They would be perfect. She's never thought about cooking someone like them before. Tracy would normally never harm a human being, but it seems the fire has damaged and slightly augmented her programming. Tracy decided to wait until they were in their office and they would try to capture them when they weren't looking. The night guard would be a complicated item to cook, but Tracy was up for the challenge. So Tracy would approach the office from the right hand door. When the player sees them, they would need to close the door as soon as they can. Without legs, Tracy will of course be crawling towards the player. Her starting area would be the kitchen. But like we learned in the last video, the visual feed isn't available for the kitchen. But when the player hears Tracy's burnt metal scraping across the tiled floor, that's when they would know she's on the move. So just appearing from the right hand side door isn't her only move. She can also try to smoke out the player. And that is meant in a literal sense. Whenever the player starts to see smoke or starts coughing, they need to turn their attention over to the vents. In some instances, Tracy will leave burning toys inside the vents to fill the room up with burning smoke. The player needs to put them out before the smoke makes them pass out. They would need to use a fire extinguisher to put out the flaming toys. Once that was dealt with, they could continue keeping an eye out for all the other characters. But if the player lets the room fill up with too much smoke, it could cloud their vision and also leave them open to a classic FNAF jump scare. And this new character is Larry Longneck. Larry was designed after the gentle giant, the Brontosaurus. They were given a light teal green colour scheme with bright green eyes. Their main standout feature was of course their long neck. Their neck operated similar to their arms. With four points of articulation, it could bend in many different ways. So Larry's role at the Jolly Jurassic Kingdom was the fitness instructor at the Dino Play Gym. This was an area that was dedicated to keeping kids fit and active. Larry would instruct all the guests to do specific stretches and exercises. Larry's whole persona was based on him being flexible and fit. This was due to his long flexible neck and promotion of eating healthy greens. So all in all, the fitness program with Larry was considered to be a success. The fitness classes would keep the kids active and busy, and was also promoting good health. It was enough not only to keep the kids happy, but their parents as well. But unfortunately for Larry, eventually their long neck would get bent out of shape. Out of all the other characters, Larry was one of the most active. They would spend most of their time in the loading dock of the pizzeria. This is where the restaurant would receive all their orders for ingredients, frozen food, and even spare parts. Larry would tend to walk around and find anything interesting that he could use to work out with. This would include doing squats with heavy boxes, pull-ups on the forklift, and lifting the heavy roller door. They couldn't help it, it was basically in their programming. They were designed and programmed to be obsessed about fitness. Larry working out in the loading dock after hours seemed harmless. But once they had their unfortunate accident, everything would change. So one night, whilst Larry was working out in the loading dock, they were doing their roller door lifts as usual. 
They would hoist up the heavy door and then catch it when it slowly comes back down. But night after night, with the consistent lifting and closing, the gears and chain have just about worn out. Unknown to Larry, the mechanism was about to give way. As it slowly came back down, the metal chain snapped. In an instant, the metal roller door came crashing down on Larry. With great force, the roller door managed to snap off Larry's neck clean from his body. By the morning, it was one of the delivery workers who had found him. They alerted the staff and took him to the repair room immediately. The repair worker managed to restore the power to both Larry's head and body. The only thing the repair worker couldn't do was attach them back together. They needed to come back another day with the right tools. In the meantime, the door leading to the loading dock was securely locked to prevent Larry from getting back in there. The only person who had access to the locked door was the night guard. As Larry reached the door, he realised it was locked shut. It seems the only way they were getting in is by getting the key. And the only person they could think of with a large set of keys was the night guard. They would need to sneak up on them whilst they were in the office and snatch the keys off their belt. Larry didn't want to harm the night guard by any means. They just wanted those keys. So this means Larry will just have to be extra sneaky and grab those keys. So the player needs to keep an eye out for Larry and the other characters. As soon as they see Larry and their severed head walk to the door, they need to shut the door immediately. Larry's starting position would always be in the repair room. As soon as the night shift begins, Larry would be on the move. Approaching the door isn't the only tactic that Larry will do. Just like Murphy, Larry can also become two separate enemies. Whenever the player sees Larry's headless body, they would need to shut the door and then look towards the vents. Since Larry has got control of their neck and head as well, they'll sliver through the vents and try to grab the keys. Luckily for the player, Larry's severed head is also affected by the X-ray function on the Helpy Matic. The player would need to scan them and fry their inner hardware. This would cause them to retreat and go back to the body. The player would need to keep up with all these attempts to enter the office. If they can't keep up and get overwhelmed, then they'll be greeted with a classic FNAF jump scare. Alrighty everyone, well that's all we have for today's video, I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, please consider leaving a like, commenting, and subscribing as it helps out a lot and it's greatly appreciated. As always, let us know what you thought of a Jolly Jurassic chapter and what you'd like to see going forward. Alrighty everyone, well until the next video, catch you later, bye.